Welcome to the Garner Method for Better Legal Memos. This is an hour-long webinar on what you can do practically to improve your research memos whenever you happen to report research to a colleague. I'd like to begin by having you look at the table of contents for the handout. This is quite some handout for just a one-hour a webinar, I hope you'll agree. It certainly is an ambitious one. It is, uh, what, a 77, 78 page uh, booklet essentially on memo writing. So, let's, um, let's get underway with, first of all, thinking like a writer. What does it mean to, to think like a writer? Well, a writer really understands the reader well, and that's something that you have to um, take close account of, and, and to realize that most of your readers have a lot of things in common. But your reader is not, if you're at a law firm, just the partner who happened to assign the project to you. It's also a, a secondary set of, of readers, as we will see. What can you safely say about your readers? Well, I've polled a lot of associates on this question, just getting them to think about what, what is it that partner readers say in a law firm are like. They are busy. Now, many things are going to follow from that, the fact that they're busy. They pick up a memo from a junior, and they're hopeful. They're hopeful that you're going to deliver something very useful. Of course, they're intelligent. Uh, don't ever assume that your your reader is a dummy. As uh, E.B. White once said very well in Strunk and White, no one is able to write well who mistrusts the reader's intelligence. Lawyer readers are skeptical, professionally skeptical, and they've trained to be skeptical. Um, so you want to take that into account. Even though they're hopeful, they're unforgiving, meaning your reader is a little bit fickle and will turn on you if you give the reader uh, a reason to. I think you can just stipulate that your readers are tired and rushed. They're also experienced. They're going to be sizing you up immediately when they pick up something that you've written. So, we're talking about writing from the reader's point of view and all these things add up to the simple fact that you must get to the point and get to the point quickly and credibly. What you're trying to do is to establish trust with the reader. Don't ever assume that you have the reader's trust. You must, by the way in which you write a memo, establish trust. So, let's go to 1.2, cultivate a knack for plain English. This is actually a difficult thing to do especially once you've been through law school and your mind has sort of been infected by this jargon that we know as legalese. And uh, the chief aim of the novice writer in law is to acquire legalese. The chi chief aim of the adept is to eliminate it. But what kind of, what kind of memo would you rather uh, stick with and read? Would you want to read a memo that begins it is recommended that we effect numerous modifications to current procedures expeditiously. Uh, that is writing that may well uh, be intended to impress, but writing that expresses well is we must, ch we must change current procedures at once. Again the difference. It is recommended that we effect numerous modifications to current procedures expeditiously versus we must change current procedures at once. Now, cultivating a, a knack for plain English means that you must cultivate this ability to, to write in a down-to-earth way. Plain English is no one's mother tongue. It actually has to be worked for. You have to train yourself not to say prior to, not to say subsequent to. And a lot of the slightly highfalutin words that people use all the time. Let's look at the example on page three of the materials 
and I have my colleague Marion as our orator today. Uh, so Marion, if you'll read the first example, top left corner of page three. Deputy Flynn attempted to make a lawful traffic stop in light of the threat presented by the suspect, but the suspect refused to comply. When it became apparent to Deputy Flynn that the suspect was going to evade apprehension, he initiated vehicular pursuit but did not attain acceleration of greater than 45 miles per hour. Now that may well be the way the police officer testified, and police officers often talk that way. Police officers don't like to run after people, they engage in foot pursuit and that sort of thing. It is up to the lawyer to translate that into plain English. So Marion, the right-hand column. In light of the threat, Deputy Flynn tried to stop the suspect, who, insta who instead speeded up. Flynn pursued, but never exceeded 45 miles per hour. Much, uh, a much better uh, version. And notice how much shorter it is. It's about half, half the length. A lot of people will begin by putting a lot of parentheticals at the outset of a memo, which is what you see at the bottom of page three, you don't want that kind of writing. That is a kind of legalese. Now, I've had some some uh, new lawyers tell me that they often engage in this slightly more formal, I would say hyper-formal, stiff style, because they're not quite sure what they're saying, and I think that's true. Legalese tends to, uh, to reek of a kind of insecurity. And if you know what you're doing, and you know what you're saying, then you can put it in plain English so much more powerfully. But this is something you have to train yourself to do. It's not as if it comes natural, naturally to anyone, even though it seems as if it reads very naturally.